Jerry Coyne wrote a review of your book. <laughs> yeah. What are some points you would raise about his review, or you know, how would you rebut anything that he said? So, so atheism has gone, has changed a lot in twenty years, and I've been engaging and dialoguing with atheists since the mid '90s, and twenty years ago. Um, the atheist community valued intellectual dissent, debate, dialogue, discussion, and engagement, at least to some degree. Now there's almost no value of that at all. Okay, It has become a um, almost like a, a bunch of adolescents uh, with their fingers in their ears yelling at people. Okay. And you can see this like on almost any newspaper, um, you know, website like The Guardian or, or The New York Times, you know, there's, there, there's a, you know, some article about religion and you'll have these angry atheists, you know, insulting people and, and, and all this kind of stuff, okay? And it's really degenerated considerably, okay? Now, Jerry Coyne... Um, finds a book, namely mine, that criticizes his work and he won't even bother to read it and write a review based on the description on Amazon, okay? Well, it's just an indication of how shallow his approach to evolution itself is, okay? The main thing he had to say in his review is, move along, folks, nothing to see here. Move along, folks, nothing to see here. Well, what doesn't he want you to know? He wants you to think that natural selection creates stuff, and it doesn't. Natural selection creates nothing. Natural selection is the originator of nothing. Natural selection is the subtraction at the end of a process, which makes room for the few winners to proliferate. Essentially, natural selection is the 80-20 principle, okay? At the end, it's the last step of the 80-20 principle, okay? It tells you nothing about where these genes come, came from, how these modifications happened, how the adaptations happened. And so when he says, move along, folks, nothing to see here, he doesn't want you to know about transposition particularly. He doesn't want you to know about all of these systematic mechanisms, and he doesn't want you to believe that anything orderly or structured is going on. And if you do believe that something orderly and structured is going on, he wants you to think that it all just came from natural selection. Why? Because his book, uh, which is called Why Evolution is True, is basically a tract of atheist propaganda. Okay, now, quite a bit of it is good. Quite a bit of it is accurate. I actually recommend his book in my book with certain qualifications. Okay, but what he leaves out is all of the interesting stuff in evolution. Okay, and this is true of all the major... So it's true of Bill Nye, it's true of Richard Dawkins, it's true of a whole bunch of these guys. They don't tell you the whole story. And what they leave out is completely pivotal because if you add in the stuff that they leave out, then suddenly it becomes apparent that we're no closer to getting rid of God now than we were the year before Darwin came out with Origin of Species. What we know now from evolution is that the rabbit hole of what is in science goes so deep. We've barely scratched on the surface. So who do you want to listen to? A guy who's about to retire, who's clinging to a model that is 70 years out of date and says, move along, folks. Nothing to see here. Or do you want to hear what microbiology and systems biology has been discovering for the last 70 years, which the public hasn't heard anything about? Why? Because the creationist thinks it's a hoax. The intelligent design guys downplay. And the atheists don't want you to hear about it because it would, it would mess up their story. So 
I just say, you know what? Read my book and Jerry's book. And you tell me which one teaches you more. Which one gave you more actual information about how things evolve? And which one has more or less of an agenda of pushing you to believe some ideological objective?